Hello, I'm Dr. Marianne Teitelbaum, and today we're going to learn about Gaduchi. My teacher and mentor, Vaidya Ramakant Mishra, had an encyclopedic knowledge of over 700 herbs, and in fact, he was sent to America to develop formulas for one of America's first Ayurvedic herbal companies, Maharishi Ayurvedic Products International. They're also known as MAPI. But of all the 700 herbs he used in his prize-winning formulations, his absolute favorite and the herb he spoke about in the most hushed tones was Gaduchi, or Tinnospor cordifolia, it's the Latin name. He referred to it as a Divya al Shadi, or a divine plant. In all of Ayurvedic medicine, it is characterized as one of the three Amrit or Ambrosia plants. The 16th century Ayurvedic treatise Bhav Prakash by Bhav Mishra, which was one of Vaija Mishra's ancestors, named it Chinod Bhava, which means able to grow when cut. Vaija elaborated on this further, stating that Gaduchi possesses Amrit Siddhi, which means that it's so full of life energy, it has the ability to grow without soil or water, in much the same way as the great riches and sages could live without food or water, and instead subsisted on the pranic energy found in nature. So let's see why this herb is given such an elevated status as a sacred herb. First of all, it's considered a great rasayana, which means that it can rejuvenate the body. Gaduchi has the capability of rejuvenating all seven bodily tissues, all the organs and organ systems, as well as the mind and the brain. It has an amazing property known as javanti, which means it can restore life back to lifeless bodies. And according to Hindu mythology, during the war between Ravana and Lord Rama, Ravana killed the entire mighty army of monkeys that assisted Rama in the battlefield. But finally, when Ravana was killed at the hands of Lord Rama, Indra, the god of rain and thunder, got pleased and brought the entire army back to life by showering them with drops of nectar. And it is believed that the nectar drops that fell from heaven on the ground gave rise to the Gaduchi herb, blessing it with incredible rejuvenative properties. So what do you think these words mean? Javanti, restoring life back to lifeless bodies, or the story about nectar drops giving rise to the Gaduchi herb? It's always hard to wonder what the ancient sages meant when they used parables to describe certain concepts. But now that I've used Gaduchi for over 35 years, I can give you my up-to-date version of what they might have been trying to, con to convey. So remember, they didn't have the modern medicinal terminology that we use today. But think about this. Cancer is one of the most serious diseases we see nowadays. It's responsible for millions of deaths each year. Now we know that Gaduchi contains high amounts of berberine, which have been researched extensively because it can prevent cancer from metastasizing and it can attack and weaken the cancer cells themselves. And right up there with cancer is heart disease and diabetes. It turns out, according to the Sloan Kettering website, berberine is used to control cholesterol levels and diabetes, supporting healthy blood sugar, cholesterol, and triglyceride levels. And they give, go even so far as recommending that people who can't tolerate the statin drugs, which lower cholesterol, take berberine instead. Now we know that sugar feeds cancer, so some oncologists are starting to use diabetes drug metformin in the fight against cancer because it lowers the blood sugar, which prevents the cancer from growing. But it's important to note that the herb berberine can do everything that metformin can do and even more. In fact, berberine reduces glucose production in the liver and it's a powerful as both metformin and glimepiride in controlling the blood glucose levels. It also helps in losing weight. Blood sugar levels and excess weight are both linked to increased cancer and its recurrence. It has anti-inflammatory benefits, including it inhibits COX-2 expression, which is a fancy way of saying that it inhibits the growth of cancer. Metformin does not exhibit this benefit. Berberine has so many actions in the fight against cancer that it's being used in many of the protocols given by even the mainstream medical doctors when they create the protocols for their cancer patients. 
Now in Ayurveda, we don't recommend the pharmaceutical approach of extracting the active ingredient out of an herb because it'll give side effects, which is why the whole herb of Kajuchi is given for cancer, diabetes, and heart disease instead of, instead of isolating out its berberine. Since cancer, diabetes, and heart disease are killing off a major part of the population, and if Kaduchi has effects on treating these three, maybe this was why the ancient doctors said it could lift someone out of the clutches of death. Vaiji Mishra always taught us that Kaduchi is unique and that it's the only herb which can go into the very deep tissues like the bone marrow, the brain, and the nerve tissue and clean it out. The chemicals in many of the vaccines we receive go straight into the bone marrow. Once toxins arrive there, you can develop chronic fevers that could either persist or they could come and go. And I've seen so many children in my practice who get these recurring fevers after receiving too many vaccines, sometimes up to seven in one day. Their poor bodies can't tolerate such an influx of chemicals, and many of these chemicals go straight into the bone marrow. And even the ancient doctors said that if toxins were to get stuck in the bone marrow, you could have recurring or persistent fevers. And sure enough, this is what I see in the children I treat. And like a miracle, once we give them Gaduchi, either the herbal memory nectar drops or transdermally through a cream on the skin, because they're too young to take the actual powerful crude herb of Gaduchi, their fevers, most of which have been going on for months and sometimes even years, disappear immediately. Many of the modern toxins like air pollution, pesticides, and pharmaceuticals can also go into the brain and nerve tissue since these types of chemical toxins tend to get stored in the fat tissue and all the brain and nerve tissue contains lots of fat and cholesterol. And when toxins get into the brain, you can get diseases like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, dementia, and MS. So again, Gaduchi comes to the rescue because it can clean out the toxins in the brain and the nerve cells. Vaija Mishra was emphatic in stating that Gaduchi was the absolute best herb for autoimmune diseases because it has the capability of cleaning the bone marrow and the liver, which are two very important parts of the immune system, which, if they get compromised, can cause autoimmune tendencies. And whenever someone has had to take repeated doses of antibiotics or has been on a medication for a long time, like birth control pills, statin drugs, or acid reflux medicines, Gaduchi comes to the rescue to clear these fat-soluble chemicals out of the fatty tissues of the body, like the brain, bone marrow, liver, kidneys, and the fat cells. And you know, when COVID made its way to India, all the Ayurvedic doctors immediately started stockpiling Gaduchi in its various forms because it's highly prized in modulating the immune system, which means that it helps the immune system behave the way it's supposed to. And sure enough, it's been especially useful in treating the COVID virus because what's killing most people is the cytokine storm. This happens when an infection triggers your immune system to flood your bloodstream with inflammatory proteins called cytokines. But if too many are released, these cytokines can kill tissue and damage your organs. And Gaduchi is famous for preventing a cytokine storm because it keeps the immune system uh, functioning intelligently, preventing this hyperreaction from occurring. And finally, Gaduchi is the best herb for treating leukemia since its origins begin in the bone marrow. But you should work with an Ayurvedic practitioner before going on Gaduchi if you've been diagnosed with leukemia they can decide the best way for you to take it depending on your own unique imbalances. And I would say in general, it's always best anyway to be under the care of an experienced Ayurvedic practitioner who knows how to use the various herbs so they can determine what you can and can't tolerate and when it's best to introduce a new herb to your protocol. This is especially true if you want to take Gaduchi. The Gaduchi Sattva is made from the stem of a plant which is very starchy and alkaline. But the leaf of the plant is very heating, so you have to make sure your liver can handle it because if your liver is already hot and angry, the leaves create a very strong detox reaction, which could overwhelm your liver, resulting in digestive upset or a skin rash. Even Gaduchi Sattva, the more mild version, can sometimes give side effects 
if you have lots of toxins which have been stored through the years. In this case, your practitioner may decide to start with the memory nectar drops or the transdermal version of it because both are just the vibration or the intelligence of what Kaduchi does. This way, you can let your body get used to it before you start the actual crude herb. You also have to prepare the body's physical channels before using an herb like Kaduchi so they can handle all the toxins that will be pouring out into the bowel movement, urine, and sweat channels. Again, your practitioner will know how to do this. Learning about Kaduchi is highly recommended because it's definitely one of the most important herbs for promoting a long, healthy life. Thank you.